What's up Mustang crew? Today we will be doing some preventive maintenance to the cooling system on this new edge V6. The cooling system consists of a radiator cap, radiator, radiator fan, overfill tank, lower radiator hose, upper radiator hose, thermostat housing, thermostat, bypass hose, two heater hoses in the back, and the coolant. We begin by checking the coolant using this simple antifreeze tool. Remove the radiator cap to depressurize the cooling system. Next, siphon some of the coolant. We want the pointer to land on negative 34F. And as you can see, this coolant is underperforming. It provides protection up to negative 10F. We want it to provide protection up to negative 34F. We will be changing the thermostat and both radiator hoses. So it makes sense to drain your radiator. At the very bottom, open up the drain plug using a 19 millimeter socket. The radiator drains about 160 ounces of coolant, so have an appropriate bucket size. Grab your preferred hose clamp pliers to remove the four constant tension clamps. This radiator hose has been working for 18 years, so you might need to wiggle it to remove it. So now we got both radiator hoses off. Be very careful with that bottom radiator hose. Don't let any of that coolant spill on your face. Now we're going to take the thermostat housing off. It's held in place by two 8mm bolts. Disconnect this sensor to have easier access to it. Now, if you have a universal joint and a three millimeter extension, it makes your life much easier. Let's get that thermostat out. Wow, look at all that grime. I should have got a new thermostat housing too, but oh well. Now, when we put the thermostat back in, make sure the spring faces the engine. So you're going to load in your new thermostat and then the gasket. Now your thermostat is stuck in there like this one. Grab a small flathead and you can just pry it out. And as you can tell, this one does not have a black rubber o-ring. So we will not be adding the black rubber o-ring to this thermostat. I cleaned out the mating surfaces with this Primatex gasket scraper. It's made out of hard plastic. It's not going to mess up the aluminum. Drop in your new thermostat and this gasket contains a silicone ring around it so it's, you don't need any RTV gasket maker. So let's bolt that back on there and we're done with the thermostat part. The thermostat housing is in. I tightened it up all the way to snug. The torque specification is 89 inch pounds. And you can achieve that using this beam style torque wrench. The new hoses are from HPS. 
These are silicone hoses. It should last a lifetime. They come with some quality worm drive style clamps. These are torqued to 15 inch pounds. Installing the hoses should be the easiest part. Now we just tighten the worm clamps. I wasn't a fan of these worm drive clamps, so I went ahead and reused the constant tension clamps. HPS also threw in this bypass hose, so let's swap that out real quick. And the bypass hose is switched. Now is a good time to close your drain plug. And as you can tell, we lost about 160 ounces of coolant. You could recycle it and put it back in, but that's not recommended. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix 90 ounces distilled water and 90 ounces of this liquid chill in a separate bucket. And then I'm going to fill up this funnel made by E. Pauto, which is going to burp the air out for me. This funnel comes with a few plugs. The green one fits the Mustang perfectly. The Mishimoto liquid chill is compatible with all Ford OEM coolants. So it is safe to use here. Instead of doing complete flushes, I'll just drain the radiator every six or eight months. It just makes sense to me to do it that way. I'm not a fan of complete flushes. Open up your vent plug with a 15 millimeter and let's start filling up that coolant. Slowly, slowly. As you fill up the radiator, that vent plug is going to spill. Boom, there it is. Now before you move on, make sure you don't have any leaks. I had a leak in the thermostat housing. It turns out that gasket absolutely sucked. So I had to add a little bit of gasket sealer to stop that leak. So now we let the car idle for about 20 minutes. Turn your heater on full blast. That way the coolant circulates all the way to the heater core and eliminates all trapped bubbles. If you had a vacuum tool, you do not need to do all of this. The vacuum tool eliminates all air and replaces it with coolant. It is a really cool tool and a time saver. But since the average DIYer does not own one, this is the next best thing it just takes a little bit longer but we achieve the same thing the engine needs to get to operating temperature so the thermostat opens up and we get coolant flowing throughout the whole engine so about 30 minutes later i'm content that all the air is bled out top off your radiator one last time and we're going to switch caps. Look at the difference. Now I'm going to go for a 20 minute test drive. If the car overheats, it's a telltale sign that there's air still trapped in the system. So we're going to have to come back and bleed the whole thing again. But I doubt that's the problem. The radiator fan and the heater hoses are fine, but I'll end up swapping them out in a future video. Until then, have a good day, you guys.